Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. So September is National Preparedness Month and it's got me thinking, are you ready? What's going on guys, Devin from Reef Dudes. So September, National Preparedness Month, or in our case, National Reef Tank Preparedness Month. And it's got me thinking, there's a lot of potential natural disasters that could happen, especially this time of year. I mean, winter's coming up, up on the West Coast, on the East Coast, there's potential of hurricanes, floods, all kinds of other random stuff. And there's a lot of things that could potentially affect your tank. Now, some people, you know, in that a disaster, they might just write their tank off. They might not care about it. But there's still those of us that have a lot of investment, a lot of money in fish and corals, and there are pets. And we want to make sure they're safe. So we got to do what we can to make sure they're ready for anything. Now, probably the most kind of common disaster, at least short term, is power related. Um, so winter transformer blows, you know, someone has a pole, many things can happen and leave your tank without power. And as you know, power is the life source for our tanks. Without power, the tank isn't going to last very long. Now, the biggest thing you need to consider is flow. So if nothing else, 100% look into doing a battery backup for your wave makers. Now you have a few different options here. Um, on my Lagoon tank, I'm using the Ecotech battery backup and that is plugged into two of my MP40s. So if the power is out, I will still have circulation flow within the tank. Now I do have four MP40s, but realistically two should be enough to keep flow going in the tank. Now on this tank, my water box, I actually have this hooked up to a big battery bank and solar panels. So I have four deep cycle batteries outside and 400 watts of solar to charge it. This also runs my landscape lighting and I also ran a wire to the tank. So that is my battery backup for the MP60s. So in theory, they would go a long time without power, which is pretty awesome. Now I have been debating upgrading this system, but we'll get back to that one in a bit. Now, if you want to do your own DIY battery backup, I have done a ton of videos on that one. So check out one of those cards and really easy project and 100% worth it. Now, the next consideration is eventually everything is going to fail. And, you know, maybe it's a heater, maybe it's something else in your tank. And do you have a spare? It is definitely a wise idea for some of the common stuff like a heater. You know, if you have maybe an extra wave maker or power supply, have a spare. That way, if, you know, something dies, you know, it's the middle of winter, you can't go to the store, you have one on hand and it's not a big deal. Now, a big tip on that is if you have a saltwater mixing station, and for your pump inside, use the same pump that's on your tank. Um, or if you're using a powerhead, use the same type of powerhead, use the same type of heater, same wattage. That way, if a powerhead or a pump on your tank dies, you can pull the one from the mixing station, it's the same power supply, plugs right in, bolts right up, makes it super easy. So if you can standardize on equipment, that actually gives you a lot of versatility to have a useful backup around that can still kind of cover you in a pinch. Now, speaking of mixing stations, do you have one? Um, having a bit of a storage bank for saltwater and RDI can be a big thing. I know a lot of people buy saltwater from their fish LFS. What if, they're, what if something happened? What if they're not open? What if you need that water? Then you'll have it on hand, it's easy to get to. Um, same thing, what if you know the water is cut out for four or five days and you don't have water storage for your family? You could use your RODI bin to get you by. So hey, you need a good excuse for your spouse to start a mixing station? Emergency water. Now another consideration is when was the last time you maintained your equipment? A lot of stuff will be a lot happier if you maintain it, you clean it once in a while. So if you haven't cleaned those power heads or those pumps in a while, probably worth getting on it. Now back to the battery backups. This is one I've been pondering for quite a while now. I have been debating the feasibility of building a bigger battery backup that could run the complete tank or rather both tanks and they draw quite a bit of power. So I'd need a pretty big battery. Now, realistically, a generator is probably the best bet for that one. Um, in my case, I would look into getting a natural gas generator because I have a natural gas barbecue. Plug it in, basically unlimited power. Now, the greener, more ongoing side of me was debating doing this with solar. So if I get, you know, a decent little solar array, some batteries, an inverter, I could run my tank ongoing on and on and on, right? The tank could live on without me. So it could be a cool kind of consideration way to do it. Now with that, if you are going to do it, there's a few different methods I've been looking into. One of the coolest ways actually, um, they're called, they're a bit of a solar hybrid inverter. They're mainly used for off grid. And if I do this, I'll definitely do a video on it. If you want me to go into this more, let me know in the comments. But basically you can buy these MPBT style inverters, which can charge your batteries either from solar, from a generator, from the grid. So super cool. So you don't even need solar panels. You could literally use it as a giant UPS and run all your stuff off it. 
and then you can run the, have your battery back up and you could even plug it into the wall so it will feed safe from the wall first and auto kick over to batteries your battery backup so if i do that might be the way i'll go because i think it would be a pretty sweet set so all right guys hopefully this gave you some more thoughts and considerations on being prepared for natural disasters you know if the power is out do you have power for flow in your tank is your tank going to keep running you know do you have backup water if your heater fails do you have a spare you know do you have a spare pump and if you're building a mix station, something else, buy consistent equipment with your tank. So it's all interchangeable. All really good things to consider. If you got your own tips, please do let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, smash that like button if you're new. Make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next video.